This is how you add $4.5 million per year to your e-commerce business. Hi, I'm Jared Kraus, host of the Buying Online Business Podcast. And in this episode, I'm talking with Johnny, who is the conversion director at Journey Further, which is a performance marketing agency working with the world's leading brands, including the likes of Liberty London, Krispy Kreme, Lick Home, And during his 15-year career of improving websites with strategy, experimentation, and data, he's built and led the conversion team at Sky, as well as overseeing the e-commerce strategy and operations at Principal Hotel Company. Now, in this podcast episode, John and I specifically talk about how he was able to add $4.5 million per year to a business through just one CRO tweak, CRO standing for conversion rate optimization. We then break down what you know, about a little bit about CRO and talk about what tests that you can run in your own e-commerce business with little to no budget and how you can start to track and test your user experience on your site and how to pull that data, how to use that data and get feedback also directly from your consumers that allows you to know exactly what you should be doing to increase the revenue in your business. We also talk about how powerful this data actually is, but also about the value that's in the data and not just trying new marketing techniques that people are shoving down your throat on, you know, podcasts and YouTube videos and webinars and seminars and all that sort of stuff. Or, you know, just because they made a lot of money in their business doing this one marketing tactic doesn't mean you need to need to do it in your business. And we talk about why the data is far more valuable. It's going to allow you to grow your business with confidence because the data says so. We talk about going deep into the data as well. Why seeing the value is very deep in the data rather than getting a lot of different data points and just going super wide and and how we can make the most from the data that we do have. We also talk about when, you know, if CRO is so important, when should you do say CRO in conjunction with PPC? You know, when should you do CRO and then PPC? Should it be together? Should it be done at the same time? If so, why and when? This is such a valuable episode. If you own an e-commerce business, are going to own an e-commerce business, or know somebody who owns an e-commerce business, you're absolutely going to love this podcast episode. Let's dive into it. Do you want to build or grow your content website? Niche website builders have helped hundreds of people to take their content websites from a few hundred dollars per month to over tens of thousands of dollars per month with crafted content creation, buying age domains, and link building strategies. These strategies have helped people increase their traffic, authority, monthly earnings, and their website valuation too. Head to nichewebsite.builders forward slash B-O-B forward slash to get 10% off any link building or 10% more from their content creation services. That's nichewebsite.builders forward slash Bob forward slash. I'll put a link in the description too. Johnny, welcome to the show. Welcome to Buying Online Business Podcast. Hi, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to this chat. You did just mention some cool things and I was like, hang on, before we hit the record buttons, let us let me let me hold that story. Let me hold that juice for the podcast. I wanted to get you on because a lot of people are looking at buying e-commerce businesses and then they buy this business and go, all right, well, I need to do digital marketing. But digital marketing is like this massive thing. Like it's this massive umbrella and under that there's, there's their own parts of digital marketing and I want to break down some of those and how people can think about where their business is at and what they should start on first. But you were going to mention a brand that you've been working with over in London and some of the cool things that you've done with them, which you have a bit more insight in because you get to see into their accounts. So what's this? What's the name of this brand? Uh, they're called Liberty. So Liberty is a, a big department store in London, a um, very famous department store. Um, it's not as famous as Harrods, but it is. Um, it's uh, and it's not necessarily a similar brand. But if you if you know London, if you live in London, it's a, it's as sort of popular. It's a beautiful uh, old building, and it's very high end product. Um, and they have a they have a, a very very strong website and e-commerce brand on the side of it as well yeah so we um we as an agency we do multiple things for them we do ppc and seo but i obviously run the i run the conversion optimization division of the agency and i work 
personally on that account as well and we've had a huge amount of success with them and it's a good it's a good example of how we work as well really so the story behind it really i mean they they have um you know they do they do a, a really decent amount of sales through the website and they've got a, a a fairly small internal team that deals with the with digital uh, in the grand scheme of things really um, but they also have in-house it and uh, the background is they they've always really struggled to get anything done to the website through their it and that's that is a really common story um so you know for any e-com business it will it will be it will manifest in different ways you might have you might have in-house developers or they might have a digital a, a development a web development agency or something like that but it's a very common story that it can be very slow to get things done either for process reasons or because they don't have a huge amount of budget or whatever and there's always just a lot of other demands going into those sorts of development functions so for liberty they have trading and merchandising teams that are just effectively like content teams that are, are, are changing and making product pages and things like that and they have cool. constant demands for it and things like that so it's it's very difficult for them to do the things they need to do to the website to actually deliver commercial benefit and um, they don't know what to do. So, you know, that's a really key point. I'll come back to that actually. But anyway, so we we do experimentation for them. We are constantly running research and an analysis to try and understand the best opportunities and the best problems that we can solve. And then we're running experiments continuously on the website in order to, in order to improve things. And we've had some enormous successes with things that we found. And more importantly, we've we have driven a lot of strategic learning for them um, and and an example of that would be um just recently um they had a a, a kind of an unconventional vertical navigation on the desktop website where the navigation is down the left hand side and the right hand side um and we noticed through eye tracking studies that people were struggling to find the search function which is in a kind of an unconventional place so we wanted to um we wanted to test making a much more traditional horizontal navigation across the top um and it was a big deal for them because they'd made a they'd made a big significant design decision to do that in the past and had a lot of conversations about it but they eventually agreed and um, that's a complex test to run we we completely redesigned the navigation and the information architecture the taxonomy and everything to fit um, and we built that in optimizely in an a b testing tool so we managed to we managed to build and redesign and deploy a test to to completely change the nature of the website without touching their IT at all and ran that and it was and it's been enormously successful it's worth over about four and a half million pounds for them a year or so to make that change and that's oh, just wow. an example so they've benefited, of the benefited in terms of revenue that made it yeah enormously like it, it has a huge change. impact on on their conversion rate um and you can see all sorts of things within it like you know it's just the, the amount of people who are using the search function is increased by around 30 percent um cool. various other functional things like that so that's just an example but i mentioned the sort of strategic aspect of it as well and there are things like we test um we, we we've we've done tests on the, the product imagery so um they they do a lot of clothing and um they have both images of simply the product and then product on models um and th they were investing a fair amount of money in taking this photography of shots with models so yeah. we tested uh, that and it, and it makes very little difference um whether the sh whether the product is on a model or not so they've been right. able to de-invest in that and sort of change their strategy for product content um and things like that and so there's tons of examples of that but that's that's just um yeah that's just a really a really good example of how we work and the, and the story is very similar in that um most you know brands they they struggle to understand what to do to their website and what can be commercially beneficial mm. the running research and analysis really helps with that 
Um, but then also they, they don't necessarily have the time or the process to be able to do those things through IT. And by testing them, by building those things in as experiments in a front end A-B testing tool, you are able to run that process far efficiently. It's much cheaper and quicker to build a test in a testing tool than it is to actually do it to production. So if you have 10 things that you feel like you want to do, guaranteed probably only one or two of them will actually be worth it. And if you test them all first, then you're only going to do the things that actually work. And so you're massively reducing the drain on your on your development. So yeah, it's uh, right. a bit of a, a bit of an overview of how we work. That's really cool. And congratulations on, you know, not just helping them increase sales from helping, I guess you could call it better user experience on the website, right? Um, through that search bar, which I, I, I'd say it probably is, is, is that, but also finding out testing testing images to see which ones are going to convert more and is it worth spending the money on on this or not and the only way to really grow a business this is what i like to teach people is to have a look at the data and let the data tell you what you need to do what you what you should be doing more of and should be doing less of it's easy for us to just say oh we just made all these tests right we've just did 10 tests and one of these tests is going to work for for people that have an e-commerce business johnny how do they go about starting to test things like images uh, and and different things within their site? You know, maybe they've got just a very small team and or themselves. How do they go about simply doing a test to, to, to see what is working and what might not be working? On the one hand, it's actually fairly straightforward. So, um, you know, anybody can quite easily tag Google Optimize, which is free to their website. And it has various tools within it to allow you to, to set up and deploy tests without necessarily having any front end development skills. So that is that, that is on the face of it, incredibly easy to do. And on the other hand, doing it right has quite a lot of skill to it. So you, you can build and run tests in Google Optimize and then be making incorrect decisions off the back of it because it because actually measuring tests um, uh, is reasonably complicated and tools like Google Optimize don't do it right. And it's not just that it's sort of slightly imperfect, imperfect it's that you could actually be making incorrect decisions off the back of it. So, but we appreciate that everyone has to start somewhere. So I would say, you know, start there, start, just start getting some tests running. Uh, if that is your goal, if that is your plan, which it should be, then you need to think about the the proper resource to run a program like that at some point. And you need to you need to think about scaling towards that with having the right resources, whether that's using and whether that's using an agency such as I, ourselves or, you know, there are various other agencies like that or whether it's whether it's, um, you know, bringing in specialist in-house resource at some point you know you need some sort of resource like that there are there are so many people out there that are running cro programs on the website where unwittingly they might as well not really bother because it's you know they're not really doing it right and the other thing is that you really to get anywhere you're going to need front-end developers to be building the experiments because you these tools allow you to do it yourself but you can only get so far responsive web design and things like that means that it's not it's nowhere near as straightforward as they, as they make out but yeah just get started um is the is the first thing and then have a plan to to try and you know put some more experienced resource around it at some point yeah um, cool but it That's is great. you know just to kind of reiterate, it is so important and it's is such a valuable thing to do and a valuable thing to, to put any sort of investment behind. Because at the end of the day, you just cannot guess what to do to a website. I've been, I've been running experiments on websites for 14 years now, and it would be so easy for me to sit around saying, I know what's going to work on websites. I have absolutely no idea because every day, you know, we test things that you would think would be no brainers and you think are obvious and they don't work they have the opposite effect it happens every single day and um there, there are there are no real sort of patterns where you can say this one thing will always work or whatever it just doesn't work like that um every website is unique every audience is unique and and also you just cannot guess you can't use your rational brain to decide how customers are going to behave around things it just doesn't work so if you are intending to improve the user experience and the performance of the website 
measured by conversion or revenue or however, then you need to be doing experimentation and you need to be testing and learning. And um, even if it's even if it's imperfect, that's that's fine to begin with. But you have to do it. Like you you won't get very far if you don't. That is just so well said, Johnny. And, and I I, I want to just enhance this uh, and add to what you've said a little bit more because. There's so many people that are looking for what's the next thing that I need to do in my business to grow it. And they will go out and listen to a podcast or a YouTube video or go to some seminar and somebody's teaching you how to do this type of marketing. And you know they've got a result in this area in their business. It's been so good. You have to go away and put it into your business, plug this into your business and it will do exceedingly well. Sometimes it can work. A lot of times it, it won't work and because it's very business dependent. And that's why I think is like the only way, I think I mentioned earlier, the only way to grow a business based on the data of what's telling you what to do. And you can only get that data by tracking things and doing tests. So, so beautifully said. What would you say yeah. are some of the... like? The- first starting point like the the first two one or two or maybe even three things that people should be testing with their e-commerce businesses like what would you what sort of two two or three tests would you start with well uh just before i do that actually um and just to touch on what you were saying and something you said right at the very beginning i think what's probably quite important is is just to think about what it is you should what it is you should tackle first from a digital marketing point of view and it's very very easy for people to think we do, we need to drive more traffic to this website um and and that's easy to do right it's it's easy to just shove money into ppc or into social advertising or whatever it's you know you just switch it on and it starts work and it starts doing stuff it's really easy and so everybody gets caught up in thinking that is what we need to do we need to we need to just pump money into media but it doesn't make the best economic sense like it it feels like it does but it doesn't and that's because digital media and, and traffic driving activities every single penny that you spend is subject to the law of diminishing returns so you know you're already getting traffic to the website and the more you spend the more you have to go out to irrelevant audiences and so the the less that spend will actually be efficient so the more money you're spending the more you're driving irrelevant traffic the 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 profitability of it is is completely diminishing on the other hand, if you invest in improving the throughput of the website or the conversion rate of the website, then for a start, you are not having to completely increase every single associated cost with the website. You don't also increase the cost of hosting and mm-hmm. um, the cost of your CMS platform or anything like that. The relative cost is smaller. So for a start, it's more profitable to do that. And you are having effectively the same effect. Like you, if you want to hypothetically, if you want to double the the revenue output of the website, then you can either double the traffic or you can double the conversion rate. It has exactly the same impact on on the revenue, but it is it's more profitable to double the revenue to double the conversion rate than it is to double the traffic. Um, now. It, hypothetically, you, you, it's not necessarily that easy to double either of those. But from the point of view of how that works, um, it is it's more economically sound to focus on the conversion rate of your website. And there is also just the sense of why why would you send people to something that isn't working now? You know, obviously it will be working, but you know, it's a bit like if you buy a physical retail store, it's not very good. The staff aren't very good, and you know, there's things that need sorting out. The layout doesn't work. Blah blah blah. Then why would you suddenly? Why would you then invest tons of money in driving people to that store when you're not happy with how it works and 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 the service that people are getting inside it? It's the same analogy. You know, the the best thing you can focus on first is to make sure the user experience of the site is really sort of well oiled. So I think that's a really important point. But then to answer your actual question, there are a few sort of um, things that are sort of really obvious that, you know, we come across when we start working with sites. Like I would say things like, um, well, we, we have a we have a heuristic model that we use where we look at the experience of landing on a website and there are certain sort of user experience principles like, I won't go through them all, but for example, legitimacy and credibility. You know, if people land on a website and they've never heard of it before, they instantly need some sort of indication that it is a 
bona fide business and that it's um you know a, an established business and it's not sort of something dodgy that's trying to just kind of con them out of money so there are there are a whole series of user experience principles like that that you can very easily review quite quickly and try and find things to improve and that sort of experience of just the instant the instant perception. uh yeah perception of the website as you land on it and what the value proposition is saying and and why it's compelling versus anything else they could have clicked on stuff like that so there is some quite obvious things around that but on the whole it really makes a lot more sense to exactly as you said look at the data first uh you know running some fairly basic analyses in google analytics and you know using tools like hotjar um can be really enlightening one of the one of the one of the sort of easiest and most impactful things you can do is hotjar which is um is both a session recording and heat mapping tool and an online survey tool is free or incredibly cheap um and you you can run very easily little pop-up surveys on the website and for an e-com business what you want to be doing is triggering a little survey when somebody looks like they're struggling either they've spent too much time on a page or whatever that just says um is there anything that's preventing you from purchasing today you can word it differently a hot jar gives you different examples um and you won't get a ton of people responding to that but you will get a significant amount of people responding and what Mm -hmm. they say can be incredibly enlightening um Mm -hmm. and it's from the horse's mouth that's the important thing it's very easy for us to sit around going you know or that user experience doesn't really work it's kind of irrelevant to what customers think and you can just as i was saying you can't guess what customers think so actually yeah. having them say it is far is far better so and they will say things like i don't understand how long it's going to take to get delivered or whatever and then you know you'll 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 see from that some of the significant things that people are having problems with and those are the best things to dive into first just those really obvious things that customers are actually saying and they won't necessarily actually work you should you should still test them um because you never know um but you know that that will make those first tests more likely to be I love it. I love it because the feedback like you said it's from the horse's mouth and I think for people that are listening, sometimes we get into the position in our business that we just don't want to put out any more fires and negative feedback is not good. In fact, negative feedback is the most valuable feedback when they're telling you, you know, oh, your website sucks, the navigation's no good, these sorts of things and I can't find the product I want or I just don't know if it's got the warranty or what's the return policy, if it doesn't fit me, what's what happens then. This is just such good stuff i mean it may may look like there's a bunch of work that you need to do but this is the exact work that's going to get you more sales even if you live if you look at it in a negative light it may be negative feedback but it's very constructive and that's the most powerful i believe absolutely yeah i mean we as, as part of what we do as an agency we regularly run um, quite extensive research audits on websites as one-off projects for people and we have to really caveat up front we're like you're not going to hear anything positive in this like it's, <laughs> we're, we're, we're specifically looking for problems to solve yeah. um, because otherwise it can feel like you know we're just sort of ripping them apart but that is deliberate like that's what we're trying to do we're not you know there, there isn't a huge amount of value in kind of really focusing on what does work because you're looking for opportunities to improve things and that means you need to look for the negatives so yeah it, it, and and, there, and you're right there is there will be tons of things there'll be a massive long list of things but the key thing is to try and find some way to prioritize that to use the yeah. data to try and find what the most significant things might be and and, and, and in doing that you're sort of looking for the the best balance between quantitative and qualitative customer data. So, uh, you know, a survey where a significant number of customers say the same thing mm-hmm. is is hugely more valuable than just me going, I think, you know, you should move that element around because that's just my opinion. Um, and opinions are fairly relevant, really. So, Correct. yeah, the, any kind of customer data you is, want to is, see a trend, is, right? It can go the other way. If you, if one person says, uh, "I, I need it to be, I need the page to look like this," and then you change it, and then another person says, "I need it to look like this," which is different, and then you're chopping and changing, and nobody's winning. You want to see what the overall arching feedback is, rather than yeah. just 
because that can really cost you time and money. <laughs> yeah. So if hot jars, if hot jars, one really good way to start, you know, with testing some things. Is there any other sort of free or cheapish valuable tool that can allow people to do some other tests for CRO for their for the e-com sites? Yeah. Well, from an insight perspective, um, Google Analytics. Obviously, virtually everybody has Google Analytics anyway, and I'd, I'd say probably the vast majority of people don't really know how to use it that well. But it, very simply, the best the thing you're trying to do is to is to break down the conversion rate by different things and to learn from it. So, for example, it's very easy to go into Google Analytics and look at the difference between the conversion rate for new and returning users anybody will be able to find that but what does that mean right so like and you know it comes with a bit of uh, a bit of expertise and knowledge having done this for quite a while to to know these things but if you just really start to think about what that means that will give you clues so what i know is that a website where the conversion rate for returning users is is really significantly higher than first time users has a particular profile around it that really means that people are really having to think about that purchase um they 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 you're having multiple sessions before they decide to buy now either that will be because your product is a very considered purchase um it's probably quite expensive and slash or um there's a lot of competitive activity in that area which means people are going away and comparing things and coming back. They're thinking about it a lot. They might be taking several days to make the decision to buy the product and then they buy it versus the the conversion rate is not that different. And actually a lot of this, a lot of the purchases are happening on the first purchase. That's a much more flippant purchase decision. And people have just sort of like had a quick look around, found somewhere that looks decent and they've bought it. Now that's two very different profiles. And in the former, where it's a very considered purchase, there are things like uh, that you can do, like urgency and scarcity tactics. So uh, showing people that, like you know, the the stock's not going to last for long or whatever. Engagement tactics like that. Also, you know, you really want to be focusing on the the value proposition and why it's better than the competitors and things like that. So those sorts of things will potentially have the greater chance of being successful tests than other things, just because of the nature of the profile of the audience and how it's working in the other one you know it's a much more flippant purchase discounting is like hugely valuable like people are just flicking around like they want they know they want to buy it they've they've usually decided to buy it from some external source like you're doing advertising or whatever or it's a product that's available in lots of places and actually your site is competing against your own product in third party sites and things like that so any sort of like 10% 10% off your first order or whatever um, will will be successful in those situations. So it's just an example where um, without necessarily needing to be a skilled analyst and pull numbers and crunch numbers in different ways, <laughs> just by going into Google Analytics and looking at how your conversion rate differs in, in the different reports and thinking about what that means, you know, can be can give you a lot of clues as to what it is that you should be doing. And if you're, it doesn't matter if you're wrong, like, you know, it doesn't matter if you interpret the data wrong because mm-hmm. you're going to test it. You're just trying to, you're trying to find clues from the data of what you should test as opposed to just looking at your website and going, I think that's a good idea. I think that's, um, I think that's yeah, that's the way to go. Like not just guessing, testing based off the data. Yeah. I, it's, I, a, it's, it's a sort of a, it's a kind of a running joke in the CRO industry that, people starting out the first thing they always do is test button colors um (laughs) so (laughs) and everybody does and i you know button color testing does not work nobody like only like i think google has kind of millions and millions of having your button color on brand rather than the red or orange or something ridiculous green something like that right so I, um... i mean uh, so yeah, so that's 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 what people always kind of end up doing, and th- and those things are just too subtle. They don't work, and also it doesn't really have any sort of kind of strategic learning benefit for you. That's the that's the other very very important thing about running experiments that that I wanted to cover really is that you miss a trick if you are not learning from what the de- from what their experimentation tells you. So. What, what most people do is just come up with a ton of tests and put them in a big list 
and then just kind of churn through them and go, that one worked, let's do it, let's move on to the next thing. But you're you're really, really missing very, very important data because every single experiment is telling you something binary about how customers behave. And mm-hmm. that is you learning about your customers in a very, very valuable way in the in, in a far better way than you can ever get from any sort of research because it's a binary thing of they do this or they don't based on this one thing uh so and you have to kind of constantly think what does that tell us so for example i was just presenting at a conference yesterday we we work with a client called lick who are a they're a direct to consumer uh, paint brand um and home decor brand they've always had this um this sort of uh video consultation service where a customer can have a video appointment with a stylist who will literally have a look around the house and sort of help them with ideas about how about colors and things like that and we observed early on that this seemed to really resonate with customers and imp- and help them with conversion whether or not they used it so literally just having this as a service on the site even if they didn't use it was a beneficial thing so we thought I wonder if um, I wonder if customers are actually are kind of wanting more from a brand than just a functional paint product that they want the brand to sort of um, understand their style and things like that and this helps with that. So we started to run tests where we replaced functional product imagery with lifestyle imagery. So rather than just a paint can, a picture of a room with really stylish furniture and things like that. Um, and that and those worked really successfully. So. But but that that could just be a test that you throw away and go you know yeah that worked to go on yeah, but but what it is we're we're yeah. we're demonstrating something about the customers and how they want to interact with that brand and what that brand means to them and then that allows you to go back and and further develop that theory we like now we've proven we were right in some sort of aspect so how do we then explore this theory this concept more are there other things that we can develop into the entire brand proposition that are um, developing this theory and so experimentation should always be an interplay between these individual tests and what that tells you about the brand and and about and about what you should do strategically as a business so if you're not learning from it properly then you're really kind of missing a trick and that's not difficult to do you just have to really think what does this mean what does this tell us what else can we do with this result what else can we do with this information yeah i like that i like that philosophy of what i hear is go in deeper into the data that you're getting rather than going wide with the data of just trying to do it all just go in deeper and and get more more out of what you've already got uh yeah that's a really good philosophy and I think that's so valuable that people just, yeah. So thank you for sharing that. I wanted to ask you as well, if CRO is like, obviously we can see that CRO is is more valuable to do prior to throwing traffic in to the funnel and just buying a lot more traffic because you talked about diminishing returns. What's the, when does the conversation come up and when do we start to think about, all right, we've done enough CRO, maybe we should test putting a bit of, a bit of, marketing and ppc budget towards towards the store how do you how do you sort of know when you should start putting some you know traffic and paying buying doing some media buying to run through the cro stuff that you've already done in an ideal world you should do it all in tandem really um <laughs> uh, because because budget. <laughs> yeah because also more traffic means more data yeah yeah, quicker testing and things like that i mean my my point around saying you need to do it first is sort of deliberately trying to get people to understand that they shouldn't delay it until a lot later a lot later it's it's a very very common thing that we find people saying oh we 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 don't we don't want to focus on that at the moment because we're just focusing on driving traffic and that logic doesn't really make sense in an ideal world, you would do it at the same time. You know, you would drive traffic and try and increase the conversion rate as well, yeah. which is an equally valuable and revenue driving activity as driving the traffic. Mm-hmm. So, um, and there's no reason why you can't do it at the same time. So, yeah, I would just, you know, I'd just try and sort of deal with them together. And and the other the other interesting thing is that those two things uh, we work in tandem anyway. So if you're if you're um, 
you know, you're, if you're learning things through experimentation on your website about the, the certain value proposition statements or whatever that are most um, compelling, that are most triggering people to convert, then why wouldn't you then test that language in your PPC copy or in your social advertising? or whatever yeah. you know the, yeah. the things are it all sort of works together so the customer journey runs from Correct. the external source that they come from into the website it's all one unified thing and mm-hmm. you, if you treat it all the same then you can then you can treat it as a holistic thing and and take learnings from one to the other and vice versa i love it i love it yeah i mean you don't want to say one thing in your ad and then get to the site and it's a completely different thing and it not make sense and not be not understand the journey of discovery to building a relationship trust and making that purchase so i'm I'm glad that you said that johnny this has been so refreshing uh, and and such a good conversation on cro and and how we should be testing things in our store based on data i'm i'm so into it so thank you for coming on where can we send people to learn more about what you guys are doing uh well one of the first things i would say is follow me on linkedin um i i talk about this stuff all the time on linkedin i'm very active on linkedin so if you just want to kind of learn and hear more about this stuff um follow me on linkedin and plus um i am uh, literally always open to conversations about this um regardless of whether it will ever lead to a sale for us i just like talking about it as you can probably see um so I, i'm more than happy to just chat to people or answer questions if they've got that or, or anything or whatever but um but I, the agency that i work for is called journey further um we are a performance marketing agency we we do uh, ppc SEO and conversion, but we also have very strong creative um, brand strategy team and things like that. So we, we kind of provide the whole thing. And um, so you can have a look at our website or you can talk to me about any of those services if you want as well. So um, generous. But yeah. So generous. Thank you so much, Johnny. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing that. And maybe we might have to do this again since you love talking about it so much because so do I. I think yeah, it was more than happy to, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Everybody that is listening as well, thank you to you for listening to the show. If you know somebody who either owns an e-commerce business or is going to own an e-commerce business, make sure you share this podcast episode with them. There's so many gold nuggets that Johnny shared. It'd be silly of you not to share this with them. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Hey, YouTube watcher. If you thought that video was good, you should check out this video here on the two best types of websites beginners should buy. Or check out my playlist on how I made my first 100K from buying websites and how to do due diligence. Check it out. It's an awesome playlist. You'll enjoy it.